Greetings, humans. This is Louis T. back again with another art video. Sorry for my gruff voice. I am uh, recovering from the flu or something. So i am still got a little bit of a rasp to my voice. Okay, so this time I am doing a digital art painting. Um, I think it's the first time I've actually recorded a digital painting from start to finish. Um, I have done several digital paintings in the past. I've just never recorded them or, or only recorded a little bit in the middle somewhere. So anyway, um, I did skip a few places, but um, for the most part this is from start to finish. This time, instead of recording many hours of video and then compressing it into a shorter video, um, I recorded it as one frame per second and the playback is 20 frames per second, so that is essentially 20 times speed. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq 12WX pin display, um, however you pronounce that, Wacom Wacom Cintiq Cintiq. Um, I, I think I've heard it pronounced Wacom Cintiq more often that way, so we'll go with that. My Cintiq with a came with a copy of Photoshop, um, but I don't use many Photoshop's features. In fact, I think everything I do here could be done in just about any painting program, um, but not Microsoft Paint. Wacom devices are very expensive, but there are alternatives for them too. I started here working in color, um, but as you can see, my colors are a little bit too vibrant. Um, it seems that my Cintiq, um, the, the settings on it, or maybe just the way it works, it, it makes the colors um, a little bit desaturated relative to what they, they show up on the other displays. So what I end up with is a picture that is um, too bright and the colors are, are too saturated um, when I'm done. So at some point I switched over to um, black and white grayscale. There it is. So this way I can just concentrate on getting the lights and darks right and I don't have to worry about what my colors look like. Um, lights and darks are tricky enough on their own without um, throwing in all the shades of the rainbow or maybe I should say hues of the rainbow. I believe this is the first time I've actually finished a digital painting while using this uh, starting with grayscale technique. Um, I know lots of digital painters use um, grayscale first like this um, and I wanted to try it so I just uh, thought this was a, a good time to start when I was having trouble getting those colors right. So uh, here it is, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, it, the only problem is it, it doesn't make as as interesting a video because well you're you're just seeing black and white for a good majority of the video but we'll survive that with this piece I wanted to do a landscape uh, I don't do landscapes very often and when I do it's usually just to make a pretty background for something interesting that's going on in the foreground Whenever I do landscapes, I don't want it to be just a raw natural landscape. I want to add some element that at least hints at an intelligence presence. Intelligent presence. In this painting, it is obviously the arched doorway. I already had a cave behind the, far, uh, the waterfall, but um, I wanted something that hinted at civilization. Um, I had a blank area on the right side there and uh, right of the pool so I wanted to just put something in that spot uh, why I chose a doorway um, well I wanted it to be a little mysterious um, I could have put it in any number of other things um, to fill the space and, and still accomplish the basic idea of, of there's a, a civilization or a uh, people that 
live here or something going on but um, with this kind of a strange doorway that the water just flows into and just kind of falls away um, I, I felt like that added some some thought like you would make you think a little bit more about what's going on because it 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 raises a question of you know what exactly is happening here that uh, this uh, doorway is just falling into the side of a mountain and uh, so hopefully it adds a little bit of mystery so um, in case you didn't read the title I've decided to title this uh, painting Cave Falls because of the cave that's behind the waterfall. Um, the The doorway was kind of an afterthought later on and um, didn't really give me a reason to, to change the the title because I ended up putting the the cave back behind the waterfall anyway. So you've got both both things going on in there. I mentioned before that I don't use very many of Photoshop's um, fancy features, but um, most of what I do is with um, just the brush tool. Pretty much all the marks you see me making is just the brush tool. Um, if I want to make kind of a, a soft or blurry looking mark, um, like the the, the mist coming off the waterfalls that would be a soft brush and that just means that the transparency is kind of a gradient from the center of the brush mark to the edge it goes from opaque to transparent and <clears throat> but most of the time I'm using a hard brush and it still is, makes a smooth edge but it makes it so that um, I can make a crisp kind of a clear edge and if I want to make something not look too hard I just use more colors more gradients of um, different shades lights and darks and midtones I find that the more different shades I use the better it looks also I use the eraser tool it's mapped to the back of my pen I just turn the pen over and use it like a pencil eraser and um, it just automatically uses the eraser tool settings and uh, and of course I use selectors like the where you just draw a rectangle around stuff also there's um, a way to draw a you know multi-sided polygon um, and I use that once in a while um, one thing I do use in almost every painting is the gradient tool and I don't know there you can see it up by the mountain I used a gradient just one layer that's a gradient um, that defines kind of the fog or, or distance fog that defines the, so that the bottom of the mountain looks you know kind of hazy and the top of the mountain is is not so hazy it's it's uh, more clear because it's up higher in the atmosphere and I accomplish that with a, a gradient of from from just kind of a light gray that goes into transparent anyway um, I also use the fill tool once in a while but usually um, I'm painting everything by hand in the you know just using the brush to fill in stuff. So I kind of ran out of stuff to talk about regarding this specific painting. So um, uh, a friend of mine asked me to discuss um, what inspires me and specifically if, if it's music or culture or anything like that. And I hadn't really thought about it. Um, I do listen to music. Uh, sometimes I listen while I'm drawing or painting and sometimes not. Uh, usually my motivation for listening is more just to, to block out uh, something, but um, I do like 
to listen to music. I like lots of different kinds of music. Um, probably my favorite kind of music would be um, techno dance and many variations of that. Um, but the funny thing is, I'm not really into the culture surrounding that kind of music. Um, I don't have any in inclination to uh, draw or paint pictures about raves or disco balls or emo haircuts or uh, anything like that. However, I did have an idea one time to do a drawing, um, specifically a whiteboard drawing, based on a misunderstanding of song lyrics. Um, I think it's called a mondegreen. That's that's what it means to misunderstand lyrics or something like that. So there's this great track by Kylie Minogue called I think it's the title is Too Much, and there's a line that goes something like, "It was a shockwave to my brain," but it sounds a little like, "It was a shark with tuna brain." So. Um, first few times I heard it I thought it said you know, shark with a tuna brain and I was like that's that's interesting and then I figured out what it really said but I like my idea better anyway I was gonna do this drawing of like a shark chasing a tuna or maybe a shark with a um, can of tuna sticking out of its head or something to that effect the, something that was uh, really obvious and I thought it would be really great to to do that drawing and do a video of me drawing it and have the soundtrack for the video the actual song and sure it's a great idea but I don't um, I don't have the rights the copyrights to actually use uh, commercially sold song in a video. Um, I don't even think I could afford the rights to a popular song like that. Anyway, I um, actually did look into it one time. I, I was really uh, set on making this video so I was like, yeah, how do I find out if I can use um, you know, a popular song in a video? I mean, I know people do it all the time, but there is laws about that kind of stuff and I'm pretty sure I can't just do whatever I want without getting permission so I looked into it um, for some reason I could not find any just really clear way to uh, get permission from the artist or representative of Kylie Minogue so um, I was just doing searches on the internet and found a website where they they could like kind of be a broker to help you get access to stuff like that and their you know the price they give me was I can't remember it was it was in the hundreds of dollars I was like whoa whatever so much for that idea so I kind of scrapped that idea I would still love to do something like that but that's uh, a little beyond my budget so maybe that particular one won't won't happen but maybe someday I'll have some kind of access to a um, a really good track that I can use in a video I, I think drawing videos always look better with um, music accompanying instead of just somebody talking about it but anyway that's what you got you got me talking about it. I don't know if you notice. sometimes this video gets weird. Um, when I was recording, sometimes it wouldn't do the full, like the full video. It's, it's cut off a little bit or scrunched up the, the screen into the corner. And uh, there was some at the beginning that way and then a couple sections here near the end. But it does get better at the very end, so uh, 
Keep watching, you're almost to the end. So, speaking of the end, thanks for watching my video. I feel like this is one of the better videos I've made so far. Um, spend a lot more time on this than most of my other drawings that I've posted. Um, and even if uh, the video isn't that great, the painting itself, I think, is pretty decent. So, um, like or dislike and subscribe or unsubscribe as you see fit. I would like to interact more with my humans, so if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, and if uh, YouTube decides to move the comments section to some other location, then I guess you'll have to figure out where that is, because um, it could happen. It could totally happen. Yep. This is taking too long. See, it's almost done. It's almost done. Oh, I'm just doing some more shading in the grayscale. All up in there in the grayscale. Making them rocks a little look a little bit more three-dimensional. And gritty and, and textury. And ta-da! There's the final image. Thank you. Bye-bye.